Hello viewers, welcome to Newsbeat South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. India pays tributes to Pulwama martyrs on the fourth anniversary of attack. Wave of terrorism hits Pakistan in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. And Afghan refugees face persistent challenges. In one of the deadliest attacks on Indian security forces, 40 Central Reserve Police Force personnel were killed when an explosive-laden vehicle rammed the bus ferrying them from Jammu to Srinagar on February 14, 2019. Standing firmly with the martyrs' families, the nation paid tributes to the brave soldiers on the fourth anniversary of attack. A report. Four years ago, on 14 February 2019, a convoy of 78 vehicles carrying more than 2,500 Indian security personnel from Jammu to Srinagar was attacked by vehicle-borne suicide bomber in Pulwama district. This left 40 Indian CRPF personnel being killed and many others injured. The Pakistan-based terror group jesh e Muhammad had claimed responsibility for the attack. The police had identified the suicide bomber as Adil Ahmad Elias Vakas commander from Kakapura in Pulwama. Nearly a year after the attack, the National Investigation Agency arrested two for their alleged role in the attack. As of now, a total of five persons have been arrested in connection with the case so far. On the fourth anniversary of the deadly attack, India's Central Reserve Police Force personnel and locals in different parts of the country pay tribute to the martyrs. While officials laid wreaths at a war memorial in Pulwama, students in Siliguri city of West Bengal lit candles and sang patriotic songs as they remembered the soldiers. Flowers were also offered to the departed souls in New Delhi. Families of the soldiers mourn the loss of their loved ones. हम हर दिन पे उनको हर पल उनको याद करते हैं। हमें दुख है उनका जाने का, गर्व भी है कि उन्होंने देश के लिए जान दी है। 2019 में आज ही के दिन हमलोग के देश का 40 सेना जवान मारे गए थे। इसलिए पुलम एटैक स्वेद हुए थे। इसी के लिए आज हमलोग सब स्टूडेंट्स मिलके कटित हुए हैं और प्रदीप प्रजलन करके मनमती जला के हम लोग उनको सद्धांजलि दिए। The United Nations and several countries from across the globe condemned the Pulwama terror attack and extended their support to India in the fight against terrorism. Post the dastardly attack, India launched a counter-terror air strike against a Jaish-e Mohammed training camp. In the wee hours of February 26, 2019, the Indian Air Force jets bombed the jesh e Muhammad terror camps in Balakot in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa of Pakistan and avenged the Pulwama terrorist attack. India later launched extensive diplomatic efforts to get Jaish Chief Masood Azhar designated as a global terrorist, which finally became a reality when China lifted its technical hold on a proposal introduced by the US, the UK and France in the 1267 Committee of the UN Security Council. A year later, Pakistan's government openly admitted to its role in the assault, describing the dastardly attack as a great success of the Imran Khan leadership. Pulwama mein to humari kamyabi hai, wo Imran Khan ki kiyadat mein is qom ki kamyabi hai. Pakistan has become a textbook lesson in the political economy of how nations that rear extremism indulge in state-sponsored terrorism eventually collapse. The current economic crisis in Pakistan is a culmination of decades of its faulty policies. It has become a state at war with itself. By supporting and patronizing extremism and militancy in the name of jihad, it has hardly ever focused on long-term economic growth and instead showcased short-sightedness in waging a war.
The recent deadly mosque bombing in Peshawar that killed over a hundred sent shock waves across Pakistan. The possibility that this was an inside job has the local police protesting against this unknown, unnamed agency. However, it is an open secret that the lies squarely on the ISI and its dubious history of playing tribe against tribe, of brother against brother in this war-torn part of Pakistan. Take a look. No to terrorism and no to bomb blasts. Hundreds of people in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province recently flocked to the streets, holding white flags to register their protest against the increasing violence and anarchy in the region. The situation in Pakistan has become increasingly volatile and unstable in the last few months as terrorist organizations like the Ben Tariqi Taliban Pakistan carry out attacks throughout the country. According to the Islamabad-based think tank, Pakistan Institute for Conflict and Security Studies, January 2023 was the deadliest month in Pakistan since July of 2018. 134 people lost their lives and 254 others were injured in at least 44 terror attacks across the country. In certain parts of Pakistan's tribal regions and in Peshawar, however, violent terrorist attacks have increased in frequency. With every report of yet another violent assault, people's fears and anxieties become heightened. Many are even afraid of praying in mosques, which are being increasingly targeted indiscriminately by jihadist groups. In Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, many families have lost members due to terrorism and violence. In some instances, families have lost multiple family members in attacks. The Naeem family is one such example. 42-year-old police constable, Mohammed Naeem's father, was also a policeman who was killed in a suicide attack four decades ago. Mohammed had been inspired to join the police to honor the memory of his father. However, he had no idea that he would meet the same fate as his father, having been killed in the Peshawar mosque bombing. The Peshawar attack was the most lethal in a recent surge of violence in the region. पुलिस टेलीकम्युनिकेशन से ताल्लुक रखता था इनका वाले साहब पुलिस टेलीकम्युनिकेशन से ताल्लुक था इनका और पिश्ताहराताना पिशावर में पिश्ताहराताना है वहां पर सन 80 में एक धमाका हुआ था गलबन और उसमें वो शहीद शहीद हुए थे उसके बाद ये पढ़ लेकर बड़ा हुआ खुदा ने बड़ा किया फिर ये पुलिस टेलीकम्युनिकेशन इसने ज्वाइन किया और परसों Pakistan's deteriorating situation is directly linked to the resurgence of homegrown terror groups in the country. The failed policies of the government, military, and the ISI are responsible for the death plaguing Pakistan citizens. Safety in Pakistan has always been a concern. The country has been rocked by another terror attack. This time, an explosion ripped through the Jafar Express bound for Quetta, killing at least two people and injuring multiple others. The blast occurred as the train was coming from Peshawar. A report. Pakistan has been rocked by another terror attack. This time, an explosion ripped through the Jafar Express bound for Quetta, killing at least two people and injuring multiple others. The blast occurred as the train was passing through Chichawati railway station coming from Peshawar. No group has so far claimed responsibility behind the train blast. The militant group tehreek e taliban Pakistan has been blamed for a majority of recent subversive activities 
including attacks on security forces in Pakistan. It was reportedly behind last month's suicide attack on a mosque in which more than 100 people, mostly police personnel, were killed. The group, which is believed to be close to Al-Qaeda, has been blamed for several deadly attacks across Pakistan, including an attack on army headquarters in 2009, assaults on military bases, and the 2008 bombing of the Marriott Hotel in Islamabad. When the Taliban captured Kabul in August 2021, Imran Khan, then Prime Minister of Pakistan, said Afghanistan had broken the shackles of slavery. Pakistan, which had harbored the Taliban leadership, was largely seen as one of the victors of the Afghan civil war. But the celebratory mood faded as the Taliban's triumph also emboldened the Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan, the Pakistani version of the Sunni Islamist insurgency. Since then, Pakistan has witnessed a rise in terrorist attacks. Pakistan had for decades supported the terrorists in Afghanistan. The Afghanis have never regarded the Durand line ever since the Britishers created it. They have always regarded Khyber Pakhtunwa as their own integral part. And this has led to the differences now coming in the open with Afghanistan openly declaring that they have nothing to do with Pakistan. It is the fault of Pakistan that they are suffering on this very account. The Pakistani authorities continue to pursue a policy of denial when it comes to accepting the presence of terrorists operating on their soil, even as the world community is forcing the country to act on some key terrorists. When it comes to terrorism, Pakistan's playbook is not very difficult to decode. The default setting is to deny everything and cover up the tracks. Afghanistan continues to live in a state of general lawlessness, instability and human rights abuses as a result of the Taliban's brutal rule. Common Afghans are forced to flee the country and for those who have got asylum on foreign soil, life does not seem easy. From mistreatment to forceful deportation, Afghan migrants are facing persistent challenges. Let's take a closer look at the precarious life of Afghan migrants. This is Obeda Sharar, a former Afghan prosecutor. She has obtained asylum in Spain after leaving her homeland soon after the Taliban took control of Kabul. Earlier, she spent a year in an uncertain situation in Pakistan without any official refugee status. Former Afghan prosecutors like Obeda are evading the men they had been prosecuting in the war-torn country. As Obeda lives in Madrid now, life is safe for her. But still, she is upset because of the struggles other women in her country are going through. I can do anything that I want, but there are lots of women remain in Afghanistan and they, they are sentenced to be inside their houses, inside the walls, and this is not still, I cannot enjoy from my life because, because the women in my country, they are not free, they cannot do anything. Women lawyers are no longer permitted inside the Ministry of Justice after the Taliban took control of the Independent Bar Association. It's only open to men. Obeda is, however, fortunate to have escaped Afghanistan safely and get asylum in European country. Several others with uncertain immigration status in underdeveloped countries are struggling with daily life. According to Human Rights Watch, many refugees from Afghanistan are also being forcibly pushed back from some of these countries. Pakistan and Turkey, for example, have forcibly deported a large number of migrants to Afghanistan. Thousands of Afghan asylum seekers lack the necessary travel permits and documents that are typically required. Hoping for a better future, they are, however, not afraid of taking a chance that could endanger their lives. 
According to US government data, the number of Afghans seeking asylum at the US Mexico border has increased manifold. The data shows that US border agents apprehended 2,132 Afghans last year, a nearly 30 fold rise from the previous year. Every month, hundreds of people risk travelling a human smuggling route known for kidnapping and robbery. Even then, it's uncertain for the Afghans whether they will be able to find long-term asylum in the United States. There was fence and there were the people and put the ladder in the fence. So we climbed on the ladder and uh, came to the land of the U.S. and uh, between the two walls, you know, between the two faces. On one hand, millions of Afghans are struggling on foreign soil for their existence. On the other hand, those who are left behind in Afghanistan, Taliban has made their life hell. Escalating a public health emergency in nations struggling with hunger and natural disasters, the Taliban administration has forbidden the majority of women aid workers. Programs cannot reach women and cannot um, understand the situation of women and girls without employing women. So uh, men only programming uh, is, is not merely um, uh, a, a subjugation of women, but it's also uh, inadequate programming. It doesn't work. It's simple as that. Under the Taliban, Afghanistan is experiencing one of the worst humanitarian crises in the world. Humanitarian assistance is urgently needed in Afghanistan to assist people who are forced to flee. India has also announced an assistance of approx 24 million USD for Afghanistan. All the stakeholders need to step up efforts to find Afghan peace solutions. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Uzma Jafri signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.